Hello, everybody, and welcome to Geek Annex, the pop culture podcast. I'm Bill. This is Matt. I'm I, intro. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you did good that time. <laughs> I I did, and then I like I finished it, and then I was like, shit, I don't know where to go from here. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. So yeah, it's, um, no, so it's been a while. Just, yeah, it has been a bit. Uh, well, not for the listeners, but for us, it, it's been a few weeks. We uh we burned through all of our our backlog stuff, so. Uh, you'll be hearing this just a few days after we're recording it now. <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, man. But I was gonna say on the subject of the intros, um, we'll, we'll get more into like the the whole trip and everything later on. But um, uh, when we were on the train ride back, uh, my wife was looking for something to listen to just to kind of like relax and get herself settled down for sleep. You know, to try and get as much sleep as we could because it, you know, we had coach seats on the train and it's not exactly a comfortable situation. Yeah. Um, so I was just uh, just as an offhand suggestion. I was like, "Hey, why don't you listen to the first episode of Geek Addicts?" And like, she got maybe ten minutes in, and she was like, "Yo, Matt, like, Bill has like one of the most soothing radio voices ever." <laughs> and she was like, "This is so relaxing listening to the two of you. I can just go to sleep right here, just by." <laughs> And I thought it, I thought it was really funny because I, I felt the need I had to bring it up to you because uh, with how Alex has been trying to get you to do the ASMR thing the past couple of weeks. I know <laughs> she doesn't understand that I physically can't do that. Like my voice does not go any lower than this. I just thought it was funny. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty amusing because if you listen to GNC, you you can't get that effect because Alex is just like constantly like at eleven at all times. So yeah, so always overtaxing her microphone yeah uh she has a soundboard now we just have to get the right cables for it so hopefully that won't happen anymore but uh I got yeah it. it gets a little dramatic sometimes yeah no listening to our past couple episodes like made me realize that i really need to get a new mic because like the, the sound quality between the two of us like going back and forth it just it makes me cringe whenever i hear myself <laughs> yeah I mean, thankfully they have some, they have some decent mics um, that you can get now that aren't massively expensive. Like, like you don't have to get like what me and Alex have, like with the Sure mics, which are just like obscenely expensive. But hmm. well, not obscenely, but they're expensive. They're on the higher end for podcasting mics. But there's so many like good options out there now. So. Yeah. Speaking um, of that, for um, recent. It's not going to be out till the end of February, but uh, me and Alex recently recorded a uh, a GNC episode, a little sneak peek here, where we actually reacted to uh, the first GNC episode. That's got to be fun. <laughs> oh, it was bad. It was really bad. I was like, God, this was terrible. <laughs> like, I haven't listened to it since it first came out either, so I don't even, like, like, I remember you guys, like, being a little unsure of yourselves, but aside from that, like, I don't remember too much from it, so... Uh, so, um, a friend of the show, uh, Andre from fine time, there was actually part of, um, how this, uh, came to be was we were talking podcasting stuff over on, uh, another friend of the show, uh, Rick's server. And we were all joking about our first episodes were like crappy and unwatched listenable. Mm -hmm. And I joked, I joked saying that the first episode of GNC is literally just like two people trying to figure out how to do a podcast. Well, to be fair, that's how a lot of podcasts' first episodes go. So, yeah, the best part was though. Uh, 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 Dre responded. Um, he's like, "What did you just turn the mic on and say? See what see what happens?" And I was like, "Yeah, pretty much." <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was a learning experience. It was just really funny listening to it again because Alex was all like super gung ho for it. She was like, "Yeah, that sounds like a great idea." We got ten minutes in. She's like, "Is this over yet?" <laughs> I was like, nope, we still got over half to go. And she's like, oh, no. That's funny as hell. Well, at least you know you'll never have to do that for our show because there's no way we're going to do a reaction to a three and a half hour episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and thankfully, like our first episode at least had a direction. Somewhat. It was kind of just a general conversation. But yeah, we did have a topic, so... <laughs> Trust me, you'll see at the end of February. We did for the first episode. GNC definitely did not have a direction. Did you play clips of the episode, or were you like so, commenting on it, like a commentary? Or 
we had it playing in the background and we commentated over it. I paused it every now and then to give like context on like certain things. That's fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that was a, that was a fun little Easter. Uh, that's a fun little Easter egg to look forward to uh, later this month. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, you went on a big trip recently though. Yeah. We, um we got back on Saturday night. Um, we went down to Orlando. We took the train. Um, it was a, uh, I'm pretty sure I've mentioned it on the podcast before, but it was like our big gift to our son. Uh, he's 11 now. So we, we got him a trip to Universal. So he'd go to the Wizarding World and stuff. And he ended up liking the, a lot of the Marvel stuff. Uh, I think, I don't know if we liked him more, but I think he was equally excited about that. And the Jurassic Park section too, because that's his favorite movie and has been since he was like four, five. So nice. Yeah, he had a blast. It was a great time. Yeah, I saw the pictures uh, Cindy posted um, on Facebook over the course of it. it. It looked like you guys had a great time. Oh, yeah. Well, I kind of rely on Cindy to do a lot of the picture stuff. I'm so bad with that shit. Like, I, <laughs> we, we got to, like, I don't know, like, the third or fourth night or something, and I, like, went to go look at the pictures on my phone, and I'm like, all right, there's only three pictures here. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I get it. Like I'm good at taking photos, just not good at taking photos of people. So there's yeah. like there's a severe lack of photos of myself on the internet, which is actually kind of a blessing. But at the same yeah. time, I always joke saying I'm like I'm like one of the least photogenic people there is because like barely anybody <laughs> knows what I look like. I mean, it's not a bad way to be. Nah, it, um, it's interesting now because now that we have the video podcasts for uh, mainly for 3DO, but also occasionally GNC. Uh, mm-hmm. People have been like, oh, so that's what you look like. And I'm like, it hasn't really been a secret, but I guess this is kind of a reveal. Yeah, I mean, you've been using your real name the whole time. Anybody who wanted to pop on Facebook and look you up could have. <laughs> uh, speaking of that, I don't know if you saw that I had an imposter going around for a little while. Yeah, they um, uh, they almost suckered me. Okay, so you got it too. Uh, I, yeah, there Everyone was like, I think you got hacked. And the whole time I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. So I'm like changing my password. And then I find out I didn't get hacked. There's just an imposter running around. So I had to like go to uh, Facebook TOS and like basically be like, yo, can you guys do something about this, please? I've reported it like twice. It's still here. Mm -hmm. I think they finally got rid of it. Yeah. Yeah. Seeing that pop up that. I think I, I got a friend request and I was like, oh, that's weird. Like, did he make, but it was, it was a picture of you with like the, the whole podcasting setup. So I was like, oh, maybe he made like a professional account or something. And yeah. Yeah. It, it It's funny to me. Like I was looking at the people, the people who fell for it. I was like, oh man, guys, like all you had to do was click on the profile. <laughs> you could see very clearly that wasn't me, but eh, Facebook, what are you going to yeah. do? No kidding. The best part is too, like I posted a just a status basically telling people to be aware, and mm. the comments are immediately just flooded with bots being like, "Come here to help recover account." I I'm saw, like, I saw that. Like, I'm like, <laughs> Jesus, like it's not even subtle. And the best part is when you call them out, the bots respond now. So like, jeez, yeah. So that's been my last two weeks. Like, not not nearly as exciting as what you guys were doing. Yeah. Well. I don't know. It was a good time. We, I think by the fourth day in the park, we kind of got burnt out a little bit. Yeah. No, okay. I don't think I've, I don't think I've ever been to a theme park more than like two days max. So I can't even imagine like four days. Yeah. Well, Cindy and I did three days, uh, on our honeymoon. Um, and that was fine. It was weird though. Cause it was the exact same week of the same month, just four years later. Um, and it wasn't nearly as busy. I feel like, well, it, it started, we, we, our first day there was Monday and then like, like Monday and Tuesday were relatively like decent as far as not being that many people. And then there's uh, Wednesday and Thursday is when like, you know, we started getting progressively more and more people to the point where like, if we wanted to go back to the hotel at seven o'clock, just not happening. We had to sit outside and wait for like an hour. Cause it was just a constant stream of people. Yep. You could be yeah. like, we're packed into the shuttle bus like sardines. I I think it's still a lot of it has to do with um I've noticed this like just everywhere in general. This is like the first like real full year of everything being pretty much normal again. Mm-hmm. 
and I think the world is just kind of resetting back to that insane normalcy again. So it's kind of like we're in that weird period now where everything's just like overwhelmed. Yeah. Because I've noticed it everywhere you go now. Yeah. But I mean, it was like, I don't know. It was also like a really nice day that those days too. Like the, the first couple of days were on a little bit cooler for that time of year. And then like it was on uh, Wednesday and Thursday, it was like in the 80s. Um, that, that must have been nice because we got freaking snowstorm after snowstorm up here. Yeah, it was really nice. It was a real uh, bring down coming back. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> being cold again and being just New England. Yeah. Yeah, I told Cindy, I was like, don't you dare complain about being hot over there. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you're gonna you're gonna be missing it in a few days. Yeah. <laughs> no, I hear you. Mm. Uh, other than that though, I haven't really been doing a whole lot. I finally uh, fixed that glare problem that I had behind me. I got rid of the oh, yeah. I, I moved the picture over and now I have a shelf here. Oh, there you go. So no that more works. awkward <laughs> awkward glare in the background. Yeah, well. I mean, it's better than like i mean i got like a bare wall and like some of my my aunt's old like like blankets and tapestries hanging up <laughs> this yeah. is my i don't know if i mentioned on the bike this is my aunt's old bedroom from when she was a kid um my grandmother lives right across the street and it's just quieter over here so i come over here for this yeah yeah i'm, I'm thinking about streaming at some point in the future uh, maybe doing more youtube video stuff so like i'm trying to like build like a decent setup for uh a backdrop anyways mm -hmm. i got a lot of like open space over here though that i kind of want to do something about yeah i was actually i was um i wanted to ask uh, uh after you started posting the video podcasts i was looking around in your profile and i saw that you did a couple let's plays i didn't even know about that and they were actually pretty like they did really well they did okay i mean it was a different time for youtube um i wouldn't recommend so anyone who wants to, is that curious you can go to the gnc podcast network um youtube channel and keep in mind this youtube channel has been around since 07 and has been through many guises so um mm -hmm. there's a few old let's plays from my very short-lived attempt at being a let's player and i wouldn't recommend watching them because they're pretty cringe especially the <laughs> oh Especially the Pokemon Emerald run where I cheated <laughs> halfway through it and pretended I didn't <laughs> the whole time. Uh, I very Jeez. clearly used I clearly used a money glitch, a money cheat through it, and you could see like I have like unlimited money throughout the playthrough, and I don't acknowledge it once. But and I mysteriously all my Pokemon are level ninety nine by the end of it. I wonder how that happened. Um, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was a. I think I was in like high school when I recorded that, so. Oh geez, I didn't even didn't even notice how old they were. I just saw it. I was like, oh wow, it was like ten thousand views on this. <laughs> like, yeah, uh, there surprised. was also the the Sonic Adventure playthrough I did when I was working night shift at Richards. Mm -hmm. That was uh, I got through that one, and I tried to do Ape Escape three, and I got I think I went to third shift by then, and then it was just became way too much. Yeah, I I think I could definitely see that. I think I fell out of love with youtube and i kind of like that's when i started up the instagram stuff mm -hmm. yeah, but youtube just got so weird like i think it was right around the time when um you started being able to make money off of youtube when things got really yeah. weird well it's like nowadays it's like it's so corporate and you have to follow so many rules and it's it's really weird because all of like the iconic uh, youtubers now are like either leaving or they're all getting outed as freaking weirdos yeah that'll happen yeah, it's been it's been kind of wild. I'm not gonna divulge too into that, but uh, a lot of prominent YouTubers that we probably watched back in the day are they aren't the greatest of people we've learned recently. So makes sense. That's why you never trust, never, never. Uh, I always say never like really meet your heroes, and some I guess that's kind of why. <laughs> no kidding. Um, so uh, a few weeks back, you said you were going to start reading the Gold and Silver manga and just to get a head start. Did, did you ever continue with that or? Honestly, I haven't had time. Uh, haven't had time, unfortunately. Okay. I was just curious because I, I started doing that this week just to get a, get ahead of the game a little bit. I might um, start actually this upcoming week because it looks like things are finally calming down. Mm -hmm. um, I have, um, I did read more of... Um, I read the newest volume of Chainsaw Man. That was cool. Yeah. Nice. Um, 
I, I've been catching up on a few animes. Me and Alex did a, and it's not released yet, but we did another anime swap. So I watched uh, one of the shows for that. Mm. That's cool. Um, yeah, it's been pretty busy though. I'm still plucking away through Roni Kenshin. I finished. I finally finished the uh, Kyoto arcs, and I'm in filler hell. But yeah, I'll get. I mean, there's, that. there's still some fun stuff in there, but yeah, it's once you finish Kyoto, it's kind of like, all right, what are we doing here? <laughs> like, I just want to finish it just to watch it once and say I did. Mm. Uh, then I can watch the OVAs, and then I'm gonna probably power through the new series, and then I'm officially on Attack on Titan. Mm-hmm. so that's yeah, um, well, at least there's not like that much filler i mean when you look at it like you know ratios with the sh- in in the show itself it's a lot but episode wise it's like what 30 episodes yeah it's like one more season so it shouldn't be that bad um mm-hmm. speaking of manga though i i you probably saw but i've completed two more series i know oh, yeah uh, the re- i've got the rest of death note mm-hmm. other than volume 13 but apparently that's not necessary so that's more like a guidebook. It's like character bios. It's like a, I think it has the the original pilot uh, chapter in it, like stuff like that. I have it. I might grab it at some point if I see it. Um, they didn't have it at the Newbury Comics. I got the rest of the singles from, so okay. I figured I'd pass for now. But the uh, the big one I got is I have all of the Viz Bigs of a uh, OG Dragon Ball now. Nice. Hell all yeah. five of them in that obnoxiously <laughs> big fourth volume. Yeah, no kidding. I was and laughing. When, I was going to um, say, when you finish Z, it's going to be like outrageously small last one for that one. Yeah, the, 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 two, the two in one at the end because yeah. stupidness. But uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, Z is my next project. I have the first volume of that in Vizbig, so I got to uh, get the other eight, I want to say. Yeah, it's uh, there's nine of those. Yeah, so that'll be a eventual project, and then I'll be caught up on Dragon Ball. There you um, go. Uh, what because you already have all the super ones right i have all the super ones including 20 which isn't even released yet i think that comes out on tuesday of this week yeah actually the same day this comes out yeah ironically <laughs> i went to newbury and not newbury um i went to barnes and noble to pick up um what, what did i go to pick up i forget what i actually was there for but um I was there, and then I actually saw Chainsaw Man and Dragon Ball just sitting on the shelf, and I was like, hey, might as well grab these. Yeah, at that point. <laughs> like, oh yeah, Barnes & Noble does not care about release dates. The second they get it in, they just put it on the shelf. <laughs> so, No kidding. Yeah, so I grabbed those. So I, eventually, I'm going to get into Super soon. Mm-hmm. I just have to... My freaking plate is so freaking full right now of shit I got to like catch up on. Well, you know what we could do is we could um, we could split it up into chunks, and like we could both read them and do episodes on. Like, um, mm. I- I'd say for the first one, we'd probably just go through Goku Black because that's only like the first, like by the end of the fifth volume, I think that's over. Yeah, yeah. I didn't realize they it starts like after like uh, the Beerus and. Uh... Uh, Resurrection F stuff. Yeah, it's weird because it like it tells like the first half of the Battle of God story, and then it's like, hey, go watch the movie, and then it just completely skips over Frieza entirely. Yeah, <laughs> and it just goes straight into Universe Six. So, I mean, at least they skipped like probably the worst of the arcs, but which is sad because it's only they're only bad because we're just tired of them at this point. Yeah, well, I mean, it's like, I mean, everyone does know that Resurrection F is the weakest of the new Dragon Ball movies for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, because it's mostly just a fight scene. Yeah, it's just fight after fight. And Goku right. totally snipes uh, Vegeta at the end. Mm-hmm. But, um, I mean, it would have been kind of cool to have that in the manga just so we could have like a more realized version of it, I guess. I mean, the anime did it much better than the movie did. Yeah. To a degree, well, so, I, still, I still have my problems with it, but... It gave at least some development, because, like, the fight just happens in the movie, and you're like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. At least, like, Battle of Gods, like, the movie is still very enjoyable. Honestly, I think the, the anime version is too drawn out, so... Yeah, I agree. Um, I don't know, like, some of the changes they made on it, like, 
I don't know. They took out Vegeta's bingo dance and had him making takoyaki. Like, also the cru- that's- okay. Well, also the cruise ship just wasn't nearly as interesting as the backyard party. No, not at all. Um, but yeah, I, I was thinking like maybe we, if we split it up like that, like the I think the first five volumes covers go like up to Goku Black, and then I want to say through volume nine is Tournament of Power. Hmm. And then, you know, there's just Moro and Granola after that. So, yeah. And I saw like the the sneak peeks for like volume like 21, I think, has uh, Goten and Trunks finally grown up. So, mm-hmm. yeah, because it's going to it's going to have a little like a three or four chapter uh, prequel arc to superhero. And then it just does superhero. Yeah. So we're going to have at least a few like two or three volumes of superhero being retold. Yeah, and then Dima's coming out sooner or later, so that'll be a that'll be another interesting thing. I think that's in the fall. Still not sure what to think of it, but I'm gonna watch it regardless. I'm excited for it. I think it's gonna be great. Yeah, I mean it's more Dragon Ball. I'm just curious. I'm curious if it's even canon. That's my whole confusion with it. Uh, I guess we won't really know until the time comes. Yeah, to, like see how it fits in and stuff. I'm just going to laugh if he somehow makes it canon. It's like, oh, yeah, there was this one point in time where we all just became kids for like a couple weeks and then stopped. What I'm more what I'm confused about is like, well, first of all, like, how are the people who are getting turned into kids being chosen? Is this like, uh, are we just saying like everyone that Goku knows is being turned into a kid or something like that? Or is it like something more specific? I'm not sure. But if everyone's getting aged down to the point where Goten and Trunks are babies again, What's that going to do to Pan? <laughs> That's a question that I don't want the answer to. She's just going to be like a an embryo. Sure, she's going to just disappear from existence. Yeah, I don't know. It, it just the things that come into my mind sometimes. I'm hoping that it's it's. I'm hoping it's that they're not actually kids and they're just shivy for whatever reason. I'm pretty sure they're actually kids because when we, when you saw Mister Satan, he didn't have a beard. Or a mustache. True. Same with uh, Ox Can. Or Master Roshi, for that matter. So, yeah, they were they were all beardless. Yeah. So, I'm guessing that's, that they're that's... actual children. All right. Uh, we'll have to wait and see on that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, either way, I can't see it being worse than how GT was handled. Yeah, well, I mean, at least Toriyama will be involved this time, so. Yeah. Um, GT but... was just like, they didn't know what to do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, on the on the train ride down on the trip, um, I was just kind of messing around on my phone, and I happened to find a really good deal in the first seven volumes of Spy Family, so I ended up picking those oh, up nice. too. So yeah, that's now a, I just that's... need what four more volumes, and I'll be caught up. Three. Uh, it's only up to ten. Oh, is it? So it's up to ten, and then there's the um, the the guidebook, like the eyes only guidebook, which has a bunch of like bonus stuff. There's also a uh, a, bit, uh, a light novel uh, novelization as well. Okay. All right. So yeah, I'll probably you know it probably won't be immediately because I'm still kind of tapped out from the trip. But um, yeah, definitely gonna have to pick up the rest of those. Nah, that's understandable. Uh, been playing any games recently or? Yeah, I'm still um still plugging away at Final Fantasy VII Remake. Um, I'm pretty sure I'm close to the end, though, because um, I'm at the point right now where I'm doing a bunch of side quests before I storm Shinra. Nice. So I'm on, I think, chapter 12, or no, chapter 14, and I'm pretty sure there's 16, so I'm, I'm pretty close to the end. Yeah, I I got to give that game another shot at some point. I just haven't, I don't know, something about it just bothers me. That's fair. I mean, you grow up with it one way, you you kind of get that idea in your mind. It's kind of, I imagine it being the same thing about how like people who grew up with the first full metal show prefer that over brotherhood. Yeah, that's true. Like, even though like, you know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying definitively that the final fantasy seven remake is better or worse, but you know, despite the fact that brotherhood is definitely the better story, you still have that rose tinted glasses for the first. So, I think the difference is with the seven remake, it is, it is officially considered an alternate universe. Mm-hmm. 
separate from everything so you kind of don't have to it doesn't it's not technically replacing the original it just kind of exists on its own yeah um speaking of games though i've actually uh i've started my yearly playthrough of persona 4. oh there you go a little early this time uh this is around when i usually do start it i just um oh i thought i thought you said you usually do it around the end of the year no i start it near the beginning of the year it's usually around the end of the year i finish it oh okay i see um i started it though because we got in a conversation on um the retro hangover server uh basically it was we were discussing uh, everyone was picking their favorite waifus from the game <laughs> and it was like it got to the point where like i was like i really want to play persona 4 <laughs> and then i said fuck it i'm gonna play persona 4 so i started playing uh persona 4 again well that's kind of funny because i had a similar thing happen uh before i left on the trip because well a little sneak peek for i don't know how how far down the line it'll be but at some point soon um we were planning on covering the the stand miniseries so i had watched it twice because i kept thinking we were gonna watch uh do it that week and then kept getting pushed but uh every time i finished watching it i was just like damn i just really want to read the stand again <laughs> yeah just every time i watched it i was just like man i just want to read the book yeah, I get that because it's like sometimes, like the more you talk about something, you just like all of a sudden you're like, "God, I want to play it again." Yeah, because uh, that's Persona Four for me. That's just my like my comfort game because mm. I can I've played that game yearly since 2012, so I think it's like 13 times now. Mm. Um, or 14, I think 13. I've played Golden 13 times, and then I've played the original like twice. So I think I've played it 15 times total now. Jeez, but um. It, it's just one of those games that never gets old to me. Hmm. Well, I'm kind of going through a similar thing right now. Like when I'm just hanging out in bed and I want to play something, I've been playing Legacy of Goku after we had that Dragon Ball discussion with the games. Yeah. Oh, did you so, ever check your PSP? I haven't been over there yet. No, but I, I keeping it in my mind. The next time I'm over there, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab it and see what's up with it. The last time I used it, it was fine, but I don't know how long ago that was. Yeah, I didn't even think of that. Those old batteries uh, are a little concerning sometimes. Yeah. I mean, get, you can just swap those batteries out, though, can't you? Yeah, you can get another one. It's just yeah. um, you don't ever want them to blow up. Yeah, well. Because, <laughs> unfortunately, that can, that can unfortunately hurt the actual hardware. But Yeah. Um, Meanwhile, well, Nintendo, Nintendo handhelds like the SP and stuff have had their batteries in there for, like, aids and they're still fine yeah well i mean i never heard of anything like that happening before and i i haven't used that thing in god knows how long but i would like to dig it out anyway because like for the past couple of years I've, i keep getting a hankering to play lord of the rings tactics and mm. that's the only system it ever came out for so it's either i gotta figure out a way to emulate it or i just gotta dig it out <laughs> there was a lot of tactical games like like a lot of uh series would get like tactical game spin-offs for whatever reason Mm -hmm. Like uh, the Yu Yu Hakusho one, I still find amusing. Still have not got that in the mail, so I'm pretty sure that's gone forever. But uh, yeah, well, I mean, it's not too expensive, so you can always try to get a yeah. different one. Yeah, <laughs> just annoying because it's like couldn't get my money back because they were like, don't know what to tell you. Yeah, it is a solid game though. I definitely recommend it. Mm -hmm. Just skip the dialogue because it's way too much. Way too much. <laughs> uh. Yeah, well, I mean, for you, Hawk Show, it's, I guess it makes sense because that is a pretty dialogue heavy show. Yeah, well, it's not even that because they add a lot to it because it's literally just like, because they try to make like the Dark Tournament, like, they try to make it like a huge map with all the levels and like there's different sections of the island that you have to get through and like different rounds of the tournament and stuff. And like almost every, like every other mission that you or every other level that you do there's like a big dialogue thing so it's just a bunch of made up dialogue for the game but it's got nothing to do with the actual story from the show yeah that's understandable it's funny uh persona 3 reload actually comes out came out today um mm -hmm. my copy got delayed in the mail so i won't be here till tomorrow but yeah i'm interested in picking that one up again because like it sounds like they've addressed most of my issues with the original game mm -hmm. at this point. So I might actually enjoy it. This Well, I, I shouldn't say I didn't enjoy the original Persona 3. I just had problems with it. Yeah. 
because it's a very it's clearly the first one they did in that style. I still need to get around to playing more. I have it. I have it on my Switch and on my Vita. I just haven't haven't put the time into it yet. It's just I know it's gonna be a big undertaking. It's a long I know it's a long game and I'm probably gonna get really into it, but like I just don't know if I'm ready for that kind of commitment right now. That's the thing with personas, like they're a lot of game. You gotta kinda work your way into them. Mm Mm-hmm. But once you get into them, if you like them, you end up getting sucked into them. So, oh, see, that's the thing is, I know I will get sucked into it. But like, when you're trying to keep up with a two year old, it's yeah, you know, you can't really afford to get sucked into something that that deep. Um, I hear you. And she's uh, she's getting her molars in now, so that's creating a whole another set of problems. Yep. Yeah. God, she's two now. That's that's mm-hmm. wild because I still remember that. That felt like yesterday. Yeah, I know. It's been crazy how fast it's gone by. Yeah, because God. Yeah, it's crazy because I still remember being in uh, the area and then just like everything went to hell. No. Mm-hmm. Completely different lives. Yeah. But she's oh, getting man. good though. She's starting to get better with talking and stuff. She she can count to 10 now. So that's cool. <laughs> nice. She's getting better with it. She loves singing. She's crazy about singing all the time, even though she can't usually get the words out. It's usually just gibberish, but yeah. she knows she knows how to go along with the tune. So that's good. That's something. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, I've been trying to keep up because like anime releases this year are like all over the place. Mm-hmm. And there's like certain ones I definitely want to watch, but like I got to really get through Attack on Titan. That's like the big one this year. Yeah, that's a priority project right there. Especially because I have like five people like watching me, like being like, "Have you watched it yet?" Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's a that's a big project I got to get through. I really want to get back into playing games more though, because I really didn't play a lot of games last year. Yeah, well, my game time is going to be limited until she gets a little bit older. Once she hits like four or five years old, I'll probably get a lot back into gaming. It just yeah. sucks though. It's like. I'm a gamer who has no time for games. It's the it's the worst feeling in the world. <laughs> but that that's that's how it is in life. It's like when you're when you're a gamer and you're a kid, you have all the time for games but no money to buy games. And once you're an adult, you have all the money to buy games but no time to play play them. Yeah. Unless you're a parent, then you don't have either. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Excuse me. Old chair. Or, or you bought a house and that's your that's your life now. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. Oh, I um I finished uh seven deadly sins oh nice yeah uh i still have to watch the movies which i didn't know there were like there's like three three or four movies yeah there's a bunch of stuff on like i'm just browsing through like uh netflix like uh crunchyroll uh high dive and it, it's amazing to me how many different shows there are now available mm-hmm. some of the titles too are absolutely ridiculous i've noticed lately Oh yeah, I, I think like we I, had this discussion when on the the season three wrap up about like the ridiculous a- anime titles. Well, the vending machine one at least is entertaining. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw one recently though that like really drew me for a loop. It was, I've somehow gotten stronger when I improved my farm related skills. Oh, I saw that one. I posted <laughs> it in the server because I was like, "What is this?" <laughs> It, it, not, not gonna lie, it looks interesting though, so I might check it out. There's a lot of ridiculous names for animes out there. Just there's wild. so so many of them have to do with like being in the dungeon. And I'm always because they're like RPG themed. I'm always like, this is ridiculous. Yeah, a lot of isekais. Yeah, isekais are pretty popular. I've noticed. Yeah, they really like like I mean they always kind of existed, but I feel like in the past ten years they've just been like taking over. Yeah. I mean, they're popular and people like them, even though they're really dumb. But uh, yeah. you also get that. That's kind of why like shows like Konosuba are so funny because that one's self-aware. Mm-hmm. Um, well, that's the thing. Also, the whole fish out of water thing is good if it's done right. But like mm. if it's just kind of like, oh, I, I guess I'm in a video game. Got to go do video game stuff. It's like, well, you're not really doing a fish out of water thing. That's kind of like the main draw with that genre. Well, that's like my favorite part about a. Uh, that time I got reincarnated as a slime because he literally just he shows up and he just becomes OP and he just goes about his business. 
No, I love that he's just a eunuch through the whole thing. <laughs> like, yeah, there, there's legit an. Uh, that show is so humorous and like lighthearted, but there's legit a point in the middle of the series where Rimuru just commits fucking genocide on basically, and it's like what? Yeah, right. Just out of nowhere, he's just like, yeah, I'm gonna be a demon lord today, and I'm just gonna murder everybody, and it's like what? But it's yeah. played for laughs. Like it's completely played for laughs. That was pretty wild. Yeah, and then like everything from that point onward, it's just like, hey, remember that time I killed all those people and became a demon lord? Well, the whole reason he did it was to bring back uh, uh, Shion and like the rest of his mm -hmm. uh, villagers. Yeah. Because they decided to attack his village for some reason. Mm -hmm. And then it it's like, it's hilarious because like that, that season two ends and then they were still waiting on season three, but they released the slime diaries in between, mm -hmm. which technically takes place before season two, but it's like all slice of life, like lighthearted shit. That's kind of cool. I might have to check that out at some point. Oh, it was, it was like, a fun little watch. Oh, I'm sure. Um, I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do for like, cause I, I don't know. I, towards the end of the year, I kind of started taking a break from anime. Cause I just watched so much last year comparatively to the past few years before that. Mm -hmm. And like, like I have so many other shows that I need to check out and I'm just trying to figure out where I should start. And that's kind of what's holding me up for anime or just shows in general. Uh, mainly for anime. Yeah. that That's the kind of the big struggle is because there's just like so many shows like, um, like Jujutsu Kaisen's finally done. So like I can move that one out of the way. Spy family's done for a while until the movie. Yeah, um, I probably should catch up on Jujutsu Kaisen. And I watched the first episode of the new Kenshin, so I intend to watch the rest of it. I just Well, especially now that they've announced that the Kyoto arc is happening. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I want to at least get caught up so I can, uh, when that starts releasing, I can watch it from scratch. I wonder, honestly wonder, now that I've seen the Kyoto arc, how they're going to handle that for the new series. I mean, it'll be a failure if they don't get Steve Bloom back for, uh, what's his name, Shishio. Yeah. Unfortunately, I doubt they will, but yeah, that'd be a shame because they didn't bring anybody back. Honestly, well, I mean, yeah, but Steve Bloom, he he, he dips his toes into every dubbing company, true. so he he could show up for anything. True. It all it, honestly, it there's a lot of like well-known act actors and actresses in that um the the anime works uh, Media Blasters dub that is the Sony dub. Uh, mm -hmm. Less said, the better. Um, yeah, <laughs> I still think it's funny that Kenshin and uh, uh, Megumi have the same voice actress, actor and actress in the uh, both dubs, but they're completely different different directions. Are they really? I didn't even notice that. Yeah, uh, Kenshin's definitely. I think it's Richard Castano's his name, mm -hmm. or that might be his alias. But uh, it, it's definitely him in both. But like in one, he says all these like goofy words, and in the mm -hmm. Sony dub, he's just boring. Yeah. Um, I, a funny one I noticed was uh, uh, Kaoru's voice actress uh, is actually uh, Komi's mom, and, and Komi can't communicate. Really? Yeah, I was like looking through her uh, behind the voice actress, and I saw it was like it was like Shuku Komi. I was like, oh, it's her mom. Look at the that's, mom who's who's always seventeen. That's hilarious. <laughs> that's such a different vibe. Well, she's a lot older now, so I guess it makes sense. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's just funny though. Like I think uh Lex Lang was in the that dub as well. I think he was uh I can't remember his name, but the big sword guy. Oh, um Sonosuke. Sonosuke, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Lex Lang, who I like know mostly as uh Neocortex from Crash. Really? The the second Neocortex voice anyways, not the uh, the original neocort the original neocortex was uh, Mr. Krabs. Oh, okay. Clancy Brown. Yeah. That's cool. Um but yeah, it's just th Oh, sorry. I was just I was just gonna say, is there any new sci fi going on right now or uh season two of Halo comes out this month. Oh yeah. <laughs> you look so enthused <laughs> I watched one episode of that and I was like this is shit and I just took it off I know my wife and I liked it when we watched it we just I just don't take it seriously you, you know yeah. what did it for me the What's first that? person the first person shooter section that somehow looked worse than Halo 1 
<laughs> I was just like, after I saw that, I was like, I was like, um, really? Also, he takes his helmet off every five seconds. I was like, it's like, what is this? <laughs> like nonsense. I don't know. See, I, I was never really invested in like the Halo lore or anything. So I, I really could give a shit. I just thought it was fun. Just fun, stupid sci-fi, just shooting aliens. I was just so perplexed by it. I was like, this is bizarre. Um, Cause I really like the, um, I like the Halo anime. Oh, I forgot that was a thing. Well, it was more of an OVA. It was like five, it was like six OVAs, like in like this Halo Legends, I think it was called. I right. found that really entertaining, but mostly because like Master Chief was like not really in it at all. He was kind of more of a, I think he only appeared in like one of those things. And then like, um, the rest were all like anthology stories. Sorry, I'm yawning so much. Nah, it's all right. <laughs> It's hard. I have to. I deal with it with Alex enough yeah. as it is. So, well, the little one's been waking me up in the middle of the night like every day this week. So, oh, I've slept terribly this week. Like, I have not been able to like. I think I've been like going to sleep at like eleven every night just because I haven't been able to sleep. Mm -hmm. And then getting up at four every day has just been rough. But yeah, that's usually around the range of amount of hours of sleep I get. Yeah, I've had like a few, like uh, before we were recording this, I was upstairs just sitting on the couch, and I think I dozed off for a good like twenty minutes, and I was like, "Shit, what time is it?" <laughs> just so tough. Like, the older you get, the more tired you are, just all the time. Oh yeah, I, like, like I'm still not a nap person, but like, if it if it's like afternoon. And I'm just kind of sitting on the couch. I'll just fall asleep without realizing it. Like, especially if I'm like watching a movie or something. Like, like yeah. I always used to give my dad shit. Like, whenever we, my, me and my dad would watch a movie together, I'd always give him shit for falling asleep halfway through the movie. And now I like totally get it. <laughs> uh, I had that with my mom all the time back in the day. Like, we'd wa we'd be watching a movie, and she'd I'd look over, she's asleep, and I'd be like, as a, as a kid, you didn't get it, but as an adult, I'm like, I get it. She's tired. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm always tired now. Mm. The city does oh, the same thing. She always, yeah. she always falls asleep. It's, I don't know. She just can't resist laying down. Like I always tell her, like, like I always look at her and she looks like she's about to fall asleep. I'm like, well, if you just sit up, like, yeah. But you get so comfy and you don't notice. Yeah. I was laughing because uh, going back to like New Year's, like I hung out with Alex all night and um. By it was like eight o'clock, and Alex was like, It's only eight, I want to go to bed. <laughs> She's like, I'm like, it's all right, we only got like seven more hours to go. And she was like, Uh, <laughs> <laughs> also, yeah, I re like growing up, like, I've realized like the whole like Times Square, like watching the ball drop, that is like the most overrated thing ever to me. It really is. Like, you watch the people there, and they all look fucking miserable, <laughs> like. Yeah, especially like the last couple times we've watched it, because I remember um, I think it was like it was like right out or it was the end of twenty twenty, I think, when we watched the ball drop, and everyone's like wearing everyone's wearing masks and they all look miserable. I think that was oh, that, we watched it. That one was great, just because everyone was in masks and they were all rather than so this this made me laugh laugh because I was like, this is so stupid. Not all, so they they were like trying to like separate people, but they had them clustered into like these boxes, all shoved in like sardines. Yeah, like all over the place. I'm like that. I'm like okay. I'm like that. That makes sense. Let's we're we're trying to separate by cramming like groups of people together. It's like, yeah. I was just like whatever at this point. Like, you're in the middle of Times Square with like thousands of people. I really don't think it matters at this point. <laughs> like. Oh, from what I've heard about people who have actually been to Times Square, it is miserable because you're basically stuck out there for hours and there's no bathrooms. Like, you, once you're there, you're kind of stuck there. So, mm -hmm. yeah, everything's just, closed on New Year's Eve. Oh, yeah. And it's freezing and it's just, it's just like a shitty, like, mm -hmm. thing that people just do for some reason. Yeah. I think, I think we tried to stay up last New Year's or maybe it was the one before that. And we got to like nine o'clock. We were like, "Yeah, fuck this!" <laughs> like all set. Me and Alex do it every year. Like we get up, to, we get to midnight, and then it's like, "Crap, now what do we do?" Time to go to bed. <laughs> this year was great because I it, New Year, like 
the ball dropped and I was like, all right, I'm going home. And I'm just like walking across the street, bit face drunk, <laughs> like just being like, and she's like, just please. she was like, call me when you get home. I'm like it's across the street. She's like, she's like, yeah, but you're like wasted. So go home. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm like texting people on discord <laughs> being like, happy new year. I'm drunk. <laughs> That was like my favorite thing when I was younger was uh, being somewhere like during like an event like that, getting drunk and being within stumbling distance of home is like the best thing ever. <laughs> well, it was just funny because like my distance from Alex is literally like I can walk like it's like legit right like across the street. So I'm like literally just like in the mid- midnight just walking across the street with my flashlight like being like, all right, going home. Mm-hmm. It's just funny yeah. to me. That was the cool thing about when I lived with my mom is I had like a bunch of my friends that lived like really close by and like they would have like we didn't have like constant parties, but we had like, you know, consistent enough parties like we'd have like one every couple months or something like we'd have like a, you know, a decent sized one. And like, I mean, I'm not a drinker, but like every now and then I'll cut loose and I'll, I'll, you know, I'll get to that point. And it was just nice being able to just stumble my way home. Not to worry about it. Yeah, no, that's always fun. Like, it, it, it was. It's funny to me because as like a kid, you don't even you like you, you struggle. Like, you're desperate to stay up till like um, midnight all every year, but they always make you go to sleep. But then, like, once you're an adult, you're just like, oh, I just want to go to bed. Yeah, <laughs> don't have time for this. Like, I think one of my favorite nights of the whole year is when the clocks get set back. It's just so I can get that extra hour of sleep. <laughs> <laughs> see that got ruined for me by working third shift yeah because there's just something disheartening about that when like you're watching the clock and then all of a sudden it just changes and you're like shit <laughs> <laughs> i can imagine did you at least no, get was, an hour overtime for that well the the time change never happened while we were actually at work oh i see but it was like to get back on your, it was actually the night before. So you had to get back on your sleep schedule. So you'd be up staying up and you just see the clock change. You'd be like, oh, I got to stay up another hour. <laughs> like, <no. laughs> Yeah, it wasn't fun. Mm. So then, you, uh, oh, okay. Okay. now you go. I was just going to ask, um, going back to like the trip stuff. Have you, have you ever been to universal? I haven't the farthest. I really have not gone west at all of like Massachusetts. Like the farthest south I've gone is South Carolina. Okay. I was just curious because I mean it's it's a lot of fun there. I mean, like like I said before, it's like you know just a few days is kind of like the max. But um, I'd like to go to Universal at some point just because like not as many people talk about it because ev- everyone talks about Disneyland or Disney World, and I think Disney World's kind of overrated, but. It's super. I mean, it, it could also be the time of year that I went. I've only been once, and it was like the week of Christmas, so it was like fucking packed. Like, yeah, you couldn't you couldn't move without bumping into somebody. And I, I'm not a fan of big crowds like that. Yeah. So I was miserable. And I was an adult. I was fucking miserable. Um, I'm, a, I'm every- also just not a I'm not a Disney adult, so like I have like zero attachment to a lot of the Disney stuff. Yeah, well, I'm not like crazy about Disney, but I, I watched it as a kid, and now that I have kids, I have like a a new like appreciation for it. Being yeah. a, a parent with kids that watch Disney and stuff, but well, there's a um, difference between that and then the there there's people that Disney is their personality. Yeah, I've met people like that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, nice people and all, it's just not for me. <laughs> the, the the last one I met was Alex's ex, and he was a piece of shit. So, yeah. Well, I mean, um, my my friend's mom is like Disney crazy, and she she's an absolute sweetheart. But yeah, I it, think it might be to a point. Like, I remember this one. T- I think it was the first time like me and Cindy actually hung out, like before we actually started dating. And uh, she came over to his house because he was still living with his mom at the time, and um. I, I, I don't know. I made like some like offhand comment about like it was like a it was like a one of those signs of like the town is had established, blah blah blah. I'm like, why do you have this? And he like he goes starts going on like this huge rage thing about like why do I have that? Why do I have this? And he like holds up like a Mickey Mouse toaster. He's like, Why do I have this and this? <laughs> like, <he> just... <laughs> See, it's <laughs> like 
It was like a fucking spatula with Mickey Mouse ears on the end. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I shouldn't judge because I mean, I literally have like PlayStation. And, like, I've got a master system that's just chilling there. This is broken, by the way. It just sits here now. Oh yeah, it's just decoration. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a running joke from a uh, 3DO where I always joke that I have a broken master system for some reason, and now it just sits back there. That's funny. Yeah, I actually um I started listening to 3DO a little bit. I'm, I'm like four or five episodes in so far. Oh yeah, the first three episodes are nothing like anything after. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, the last one I listened to was the first one Thrak was on. So I'm getting into the part where after you revived it. Yeah, and we it actually becomes a consistent show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because the first three episodes, well, the first episode's a joke. It's literally just me talking to myself for 14 minutes. Um, the, uh, the second and third episodes that were pretty cool, they were, um, mm-hmm. they were, that was my original goal for 3DO, like direction where I wanted to be kind of like a experiment show like that. But then it, I found out finding guests for that is really hard because no one knows what a 3DO is. Yeah. I got lucky and got the first two done, like within like a span of each other. And then it was like, I hit like this roadblock. I was like, oh, <laughs> what do I do now? <laughs> and then like a year later, Thrak, uh, kind of just became the host and then the, we've been going ever since yeah it's not a bad thing yeah it's it's definitely the most structured show i do at this mm-hmm. point because gnc is definitely not structured and then this is mostly a shooting the shit kind of show so yeah which is the kind of thing i usually prefer as you guys if i'm gonna make a podcast i'm gonna try to well i say it like i mean i just kind of show up you gotta do all the work but <laughs> I don't um, edit much. So but generally like if I'm going to if I'm going to be a part of something like this, I'd like it to be the type of thing I would like to listen to, you know. Hmm. No, that's why I like I like this show cuz it's chill. Um and I don't have to follow as many uh scripts and rule changes as I do on my other shows. Mhm. Yeah, yeah. 3DO I actually have to do research for and then GNC is um very dependent on what the topic is yeah and keeping up with the chaos keeping up with the chaos which is hilarious when we have a guest on because she suddenly gets really calm and normal yeah well i mean you know how you are with your siblings is different than how you are with i don't know strangers probably isn't the right word but i mean practically she's created a like a cult around water bottles that's like her newest thing that's (laughs) i've noticed that I don't understand where it came from, but it it happened. So I've contributed to that page a little bit. I think we all have, just out of I- I- irony. I found that great like water bottle triggered image recently, and I was like, <laughs> "This perfectly sums up Alex." It's awesome. And then, um, yeah, between that and the Kermit the Frog thing, like all I, these things just keep happening on the Discord. <laughs> Snickerman started that, and it just has become a thing all of a sudden. And now that now those gifts are evolving because like. Rick posted the one of like them jumping on the bed and then it cuts to Kermit suicide. And I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, oh God, they're evolving. Oh, geez. There's a Kermit gift for every situation though. It's bizarre. Yeah, it definitely seems that way. <laughs> yeah. I was joking. Cause like every server that I'm in has its own little gimmick. Like I've noticed like Rick's server has like the, uh, the Garfield gimmick. And then like, there's a bunch of other ones that are just crazy and stuff. Hmm. I'm not sure what the gimmick over in the novel console server server is at this point yet. Um, I don't we know. Joke that it, we joke that it's that cursed Sonic and Mario gift that appears every now and then. Oh, I haven't I haven't seen that. No, you have because you commented on it once. Oh, I did. Yeah, the one of Sonic and Mario making out. Oh right. Oh god, I think I blocked that out. <laughs> don't worry, it'll appear again at some point. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure yeah. that like I'm sure Will will listen to this episode and immediately post it out of out of spite. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I'm um, yeah. I, I'm mostly on the, on your server, but I, I pop into uh into Nova Console and Pixel Project from time to time. Mm. Try to have some conversations here and there. You know, I'm I'm enough of an introvert in real life. I could at least you know try to interact online. <laughs> yeah, I'm. My problem is I'm in like too many servers now and I'm always trying to like keep up with all of them, but it's so hard to keep up with all of them at this point. Yeah. 
I totally, I have enough trouble just keeping up with three of them. And I'm like, I don't know. I, I feel like I'm bad at talking to people through text. I feel like I always give off the wrong vibe and I don't know. <laughs> I've gotten much better at it. Cause I just, I do it so much now, but like it, it took a while to like get comfortable just writing stuff. Yeah. There's been a lot of times where like, I'll just, I'll look at something that somebody responded to me with and I'll be like, I don't even respond to that. Like, Never mind. I'll just well, put so, it away. Well, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes it's just like better too because th- there's a few people I've that they do that as a joke where they'll post something that just makes you feel uncomfortable and you're just like, okay, this is where this ends and you just move on. Well, I think that happened on um the the Pixel Project Radio uh, Discord. Is I the first the first thing I ever commented on there was just like a dumb little joke that like people who know me would would get what I was going for and be and you know. If they didn't think it was funny, they'd at least give me like a, you know, uh, sympathy chuckle. But like, I don't know. I just feel like if, if it was like a real life conversation and I said that everyone would have just been looking at me like I had three heads. So I just, yeah, "Ah, shit, like bad first impression. No, I hear you. Oh man. Yeah. I've been like debating like games I want to play this year. Mm Mm-hmm. It's kind of sucks because like there's new games coming out, but I just like am not really interested in new games anymore. Yeah, unless there's something like really specific that comes out. Like, obviously, I don't have the system for it right now, but when Fable Four comes out, I'm definitely gonna want to play that. Um, mm. And then I'm I'm pretty close to beating Final Fantasy VII Remake right now. Um, and then when I finish that, I'm probably gonna jump over to Hogwarts Legacy. Because I've been hearing nothing but good things about that game. My wife's been playing it. Like, whenever she has the opportunity, she's playing it. I've heard it's it's a great game if you're, like, a, a Harry Potter fan, so. Yeah, well, I mean, I I mean, I just went to the Wizarding World, so. <laughs> well, well, I mean, I, I grew up reading the books. I forget. Yeah. I, went, I went to the fucking overnight book release at Borders with a seventh book. Like, there's a picture that only exists on one of those, um, you know, those uh, digital picture frame things where you load a bunch of pictures onto it and cycles through them. This picture I'm pretty sure only exists on one of those that my grandmother owns. And it's a picture of me dressed up like Harry Potter with that book <laughs> from that night. Yeah. I was in middle school. So that's like one of my favorite, like uh internet gif, like memes ever is like the, uh, the Harry, it was like one of the Harry Potter uh, movie, uh, movie uh premieres and like everyone was waiting out in line and you get the asshole in the car who drives by who just goes snape kills dumbledore <laughs> <laughs> and you get the person in line screaming you <laughs> i love that i love that gif so much because it just highlights like how stupid those lines can be sometimes for real and then like at the same time like I think that's friggin' hilarious because the dude obviously knew, so he must have read it. So he's like making fun of them, but he's he's obviously known. Well, you forget there's a bunch of movie only people that don't know. Yeah, well, I mean, if if you didn't know that by the time the Half Blood Prince movie came out, then that's kind of your fault. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there was a good well, few years between the book and the movie. True. I mean, to be fair though, there was at least a decent like that was before like the internet was really bad with spoilers like. Mm-hmm. The first movie I can really think of where spoilers were like that bad is like still like Endgame. Because mm-hmm. like you couldn't go anywhere without Endgame spoilers popping up. Well, I I mean, I've heard a few things here and there, but I pay so little attention to Marvel anyway that anything that I did here just kind of got driven out. Yeah. I mean, if you were like b- deep into it, like I was at the time, like you, you had to like dodge everything. Because mm-hmm. I had to wait till the uh, the ray came out because i missed it in theaters because it came out at a weird time in theaters uh, i was actually really surprised that i managed to avoid all spoilers for attack on titan the ending mm. and that the manga's been done for like like a year or two i think it's been a bit since the manga ended so i'm surprised i stayed completely spoiler free for that that whole time yeah <laughs> See, nowadays you just get spoiled in like the most hilarious points. Like I, I always joke about how I got spoiled for Oshinoko in the Formula One subreddit. Oh yeah. That that's yeah. another one I need to watch. That you said that's on high dive, right? Yep. Yeah. I'll have to just get a trial just so I can bang that out and then I'll I'll close it out. Well, I there's can't a bunch of more streaming services. Yeah. <laughs> there's a bunch of cool 
stuff on high dive so it is worth uh, at least checking some of that stuff out yeah well I, i'll get the trial I'll, I'll binge oshinoko and then i'll just look through and see what else is there and if it if i think it's worth dropping something else to get that then i'll do it but yeah um i'll highly recommend azamaga dio any day yeah, that, that's one of those classic ones that I need to get around to. I, there's a bunch of classics that I just missed over the years, and I, I know I'll get to them eventually. It's just, yeah, like I say, it's, it's hard. It's hard to figure out where to start when you're when you're trying to catch up on stuff. Yeah, I've been trying to bang out a bunch of 26ers, like just because they're 26, 24s, because they're just so easy to get through. Yeah, short and sweet. Get through it in a you know half a week. Yeah, if you're, anything if you're diligent about it, at least. Yeah, anything over 26 is like a lot. Mm-hmm. Like even like a like a 42 or 48 or a like a even a I think like the longest one that's still considered somewhat short is like a 60 like like a full metal alchemist like style like 60 something. Yeah. yeah, see that's like right on like the edge of like starting to get long but still short enough where like if you're into it you can easily finish it like within a few days yeah like it also shows you just how much like bloat and like unnecessary filler was in like shows back in the day like you look at a uh, maroni mm-hmm. kenshin like the old series compared to the new series and there was so much bloat in the old series oh yeah like I just i mean i only watched the first episode of the new series but i can already tell that they fucking they cut out a lot of the bullshit well they're going right they're basically trying to do a manga accurate version so Oh, I'm into that. I'll I'll buy this. Oh, that reminds me. I saw um on Amazon that Ship It In is getting like a new Blu-ray release with like 30 episode seasons. Oh yeah, they're they're re-releasing a uh, Ship It In now on a. Uh, they're doing the Blu-rays like they did for uh, the Naruto originals. Yeah, I might finally actually get Ship It In because I I certainly wasn't gonna buy the 12 episode sets. <laughs> me who bought every fucking dvd <laughs> <laughs> all fucking 38 of those things yeah, yeah i i just didn't have it. i mean i i bought just the pain ones because that was where the hulu dub cut off and i really wanted yeah. to watch pain again but see i did it the best i did it in reverse like i started with 38 and went backwards <laughs> <laughs> well because those were the easiest ones to find at the time because they were all available in um like Best Buy and stuff, and then like, I just kind of went backwards from there. Mm-hmm. I mean, it kind of worked, so. Yeah. Oh, um, have you seen that new Ghibli movie yet? I still haven't yet. It's um, I don't know what ev- what service it's available on. I I think it's still in theaters. Oh, maybe it is. Because um, well, I mean, I don't know what the rules are with um, the because we saw it in the Universal Theater while we were mm-hmm. there. Um, which is really nice, by the way. It's like the well, first of all, the concessions were way cheaper than they are here, yeah. um, which is wild to me. Um, and it was like these really nice, like reclined seats, and it was really, it was really cool. They, did, they, had, they had a bar there. <laughs> you can bring, <laughs> nice. you can bring booze in there with you. <laughs> yeah, they have a few of those up here, like the alcoholic theaters, where you can just bring in, or you can get like a beer. <laughs> they, they'll bring you a beer. Yeah, that's freaking awesome. But yeah, we, um, me, Cindy, and Xander went to go see the boy in the heron, and it was good. We we enjoyed it a lot. It was definitely like I, I swear to God, whenever Cindy and I sit down to watch a Ghibli movie, we always end up looking at each looking at each other like, "What the fuck are we watching?" <laughs> like every time. But I mean, it was it was a really enjoyable movie. I wasn't expecting it to take place like when it does. Okay. Um, because it takes place. I, they never, I don't know if they ever blatantly say it, but I'm pretty sure it takes place like World War II ish. Okay. Oh, that's interesting because uh, The Wind Rises was also World War II ish. Mm-hmm. But well, no, I, it was World War II because it, it took, it was Japan in World War II. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the cast is fucking loaded on that movie. They got hmm. what, Mark Hamill, Christian Bale. Um, yeah, they brought, because Christian Bale was previously a. Uh, he was Howl in Hell's Moving Castle, and Mark Hamill was the villain in Castle in the Sky. Mm-hmm. And I know those. I, I I have a trouble remembering, but I know there was a bunch of other like big names that were in it. Mm. So I mean, it was a good movie. I definitely liked it a lot. <clears throat> I'm de- I'm definitely going to uh, 
definitely gonna check it out once I get the chance. Probably when it comes to stream. Well, actually, actually, for streaming, it'll be on HBO Max because that's where all the other ones are. Probably. Most likely. Yeah, I'll probably wait till it comes to streaming just because I haven't had time to go to the movies. Mm. Yeah, that, that's another thing. I that, that should be one of my projects this year is going through some of the Ghibli movies. They're all really good. They're worth watching. Like I still say, The Wind Rises is one of the most surprisingly good movies I've seen in a long time. Hmm. Did you ever listen to the episode we did talking about them all? Yeah. Yeah, that was. was that, a, um, who was um with you with you with that, that one? That was a uh, Rick. That's what I thought. All right. That, that was the first time I met Rick, uh, if uh, in person, technically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a fun one because that was just such a crazy uh, experience because that was the first time I'd seen most of those and Alex for the most part as, as well. Yeah, everyone put Ponyo pretty low on their rankings. Yeah, which is weird because Alex liked it. I, I, I enjoyed it too, honestly. I, I just think it's a really fun, wholesome movie. It's, it's one of the few Ghibli movies I have seen and I've seen it god way too many times because it's I, my daughter's like favorite movie she loves that movie i think the biggest hot take we had in that list was uh me and alex both putting uh princess mononoke so low that's one that i've always heard good things about but i just i never got around to watching it it was too violent for alex which is hilarious considering some of the things she actually watches but um yeah right she didn't she didn't like the violence <laughs> yeah <laughs> We didn't like the violence of it, and I thought it was just too long. Really? How long is it? It's like two hours. Oh, jeez. It's like two hours long, and it feels two hours long. Yeah. Um, which is interesting because um, Spirited Away, the one right after it, and probably the most famous Ghibli film, that's also two hours, but that does not feel two hours at all. That one flies by. Yeah, it does. So... I think it's just a case of the, I, something about Prince of Monoke, I just d didn't do it for us. Well, I mean, pacing matters, you know. You could have the same. I mean, look at, I mean, like, like we said in a previous episode, the difference between Dragon Ball GT and uh, Full Metal Brotherhood, they have the same episode count. Like, yeah. But one is clearly way better paced and way better laid out than the other. <laughs> yeah. One didn't know what it was trying to do. Yeah. GT is a slog for the most part, and Full Metal flies by. Yeah. Uh, did you see the uh, the any any of the clips from the new Dragon Ball, the Tenkaichi 4? Uh, I think so. I, I think I just saw, like, the Goku Vegeta, like, intro trailer. I saw the clip of, like, how the, the character select screen, and, like, half of them are Goku. Yeah, that's not surprising. <laughs> it was just, just like, like that with the old ones, too. Yeah. I forgot that normal Goku was an unlockable. Well, no, it was a paid DLC in Fighter Z. Yeah, isn't that weird? I think Goku and Vegeta, Saiyan Saga. Yeah, it's like normal, like <laughs> non Super Saiyan. You can't play. You have to pay for. Isn't that wild how that came full circle? And now you have to pay to get non transformed characters. Yeah, there's also a uh, old Brawly and new Brawly. Yep. Oh, and um. I think they revealed what the uh, I think the last DLC for season two of Kakarot is going to be. Oh, it's yeah? going to be um, the that last tournament from Z where you meet Zub. Oh really? Yeah. So it makes me kind of wonder if that's if that's going to be it for Kakarot because that I mean it kind of feels like a definitive last one. I so. really want them to do another game where they do Super or old or original Dragon Ball for that. Original Dragon Ball is the one I'd want the most. And the only way I'd want them to do Super is if they added exploration with other universes. Hmm. Like, if we could just pop over, like, like, kind of what Dragon Ball Online was. Like, I was really upset that we never got that and that it ended up being short-lived anyway because I heard so many cool things about it. Yeah, that was the only place you could find Super Pan, technically. Yeah. And, um... Yeah, it was all like the, the kind of lore that went into that. And I'm pretty sure Toriyama wrote some of the lore for those game for that game too. And mm. there was a lot of cool stuff about it. Like things like um like how, how Gohan had written a book about key and that's why so many more humans on Earth know how to use key is because they read the book. Like because oh. it takes place like I don't know, like a hundred, two hundred years later or something, like after everybody dies. So yeah. I don't know, it's just 
like the whole concept of like, all right, let's see what this world is like a few hundred years down the line and see how this goes, you know? Hmm. Which means GT isn't canon because the world got destroyed in GT. Yeah, that's true. That's my biggest problem with the ending of GT. Goku literally just fucks off and leaves his family to die as he just goes and explores the universe. Yeah, or whatever the hell he did. I, I think there was like... I do think the ending of GT was like based on some sort of myth. I, I'd have to look into it. I know I... I saw a video on it once where somebody explained like the, the myth that that was based off of, but... Um, but I mean, to be fair, the ending of GT is the most satisfying ending out of any of the Dragon Ball shows. That's like one of the few things GT really has going for it. When you when you say ending, do you mean the series ending or the end the uh, the film ending? The series ending. Okay, because there's also the film that takes place after. Uh, yes, but that I believe came out right after the baby arc. Okay, that's technically the finale, though, right? what the, the the ova film thing uh no because that that um there was still like 20 more episodes that came out after that oh i have no idea what gt sometimes it was some it was a really weird I, I always thought that that came out last too but apparently it came out at like right after the baby arc finished but before super 17 and then like the actual series finale was the last gt thing to come out so, oh, okay. <laughs> GT. It's not canon. <laughs> That's all that matters. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the ending to Super was pretty good, even though it's kind of like you just wanted more. Yeah, well, I mean, the ending to Super was a lot like the ending to Z, where it's just like, hey, like, there's definitely more to this story, but we're just not going to tell it to you. See ya. <laughs> but, it, but, it, but at least in Super, he doesn't abandon his family. True. For like the twelfth time. <laughs> well, I mean, not at the ending. He bandits his family a lot during Super. <laughs> yeah, but he always comes back. <laughs> True. It's not like he's gone, just like forever. That reminds me though, the um the newest chapter of Super came out uh, like a week or two ago, and it was uh, the first post superhero thing, and um. Uh, I think a couple like remnants from Red Ribbon. Uh, I think actually Magenta. Uh, is that his name? Or am I thinking of? Oh no, Carmine, that guy, the guy with the big ass pompadour. Oh yeah, in his own uh, intro. Yeah, um, he like like I, recruits Goten and Trunks because they're like superheroes now. They're like Saiyan guys now, and he like recruits them to try and like he's like like trying to trick them to go and fight Gohan for them because he's like mad at Gohan. Then, like, they show up, and it go to the trunks to look at him, and they're like, this is my brother's house, dude. I'm not doing that. And then Gohan sees them, and he gets all mad and goes, like, straight into his new beast form. So that's encouraging, at least, that he can just jump right into that. Can still do it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, like, it flashes to Beerus's planet, and Goku's like, huh? <laughs> and he, like, teleports. It's right there, and he's like, oh, Gohan, what happened to you? <laughs> what did I miss? <laughs> And then, uh, that's where the chapter ends, but I'm excited to see where that goes because like it might actually get an answer to like where Gohan stands power wise to to Goku and Vegeta. Yeah, hopefully they don't pull Toriyama like Goku magic out of his ass and still make Goku more powerful. He probably will be. I mean, he has been training with Beerus, you know. True. And Broly actually. So. But Vegeta won. <laughs> yeah, they didn't use transformations. It's not the same. True. Although, that was still still satisfying. I'm pretty sure Ultra Instinct was still beat Ultra Ego, but still. Yeah, Ultra Instinct is like just like the biggest like fuck you power in Dragon Ball. Pretty much, like Goku needed another one, right? He's gonna, and the worst part is, you know, he's gonna get another one. Maybe. Well, I they I definitely think Ultra Instinct is gonna be the. Um, it's going to be the standard going forward for him. But they made it very clear once he, like, mastered the mastered version, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, that Whis is just like, yeah, you mastered it, 
but you're still like the lowest of the totem pole for Ultra Instinct. So you still got a ways to go, bud. So it's so just going to be basically he's starting from scratch again, but now he's just all like borderline god at this point. Yeah, I think Ultra Instinct is just going to be the new Super Saiyan, and we might end up getting other versions of Ultra Instinct, or he'll just get better at using it. We don't know yet, but I, I think he's got enough transformations. We should work on techniques. I just hate the fact that like Ultra Instinct now has basically just pretty much eliminated any possibility of Super Saiyan 4 becoming a thing again. Yeah, it's definitely kind of a bummer, but... Because I just can't see Super Saiyan 4 being considered more powerful. Although, if you went Super Saiyan 4 and used Ultra Instinct, that would be like all those fan arts of Super Saiyan 5. <laughs> From the Dragon Ball AF. Yeah. <laughs> dumbest, like... Uh, the, one of the dumbest internet rumors ever that people bought. People still buy it. I know. That's how bad it is. But the funny thing is, is the most popular version of that fan comic, the guy who did it is currently doing the super manga. Yeah. I mean, he's so, a good artist, so. Yeah. Isn't he supposedly shadow writing a lot of it, too? Uh, Well, I mean, Toriyama's kind of like trying to train him up to be the, like, he's going to be like the successor, so... Yeah, he, he has he has sway with the story. Like obviously Toriyama's word is law, but I mean they they collaborate on a lot of stuff. I heard a rumor that he's secretly shadow writing it, and Toriyama's just putting his name on a lot of things and just kind of approving stuff. But I think a lot. Of, I think that is the case for a lot of it. Like I think um, I want to say Granola was. Is it the? I can't remember if it was Moro or um, Granola, but I know one of those was like his his main idea. Like obviously Toriyama had insight and like he had his own ideas for the story, but um, I'm pretty sure one of those stories, uh, Toyotara, was spearheading. So that's just funny to me that the the fan creator ended up becoming the, the basically the real creator in the end. Yeah. Right. Unfortunately, that means uh, the the AF fan comic will never have a conclusion. Yeah, unfortunately. Well, I Most mean, he's he's definitely pulling ideas from that. Because, like, yeah. like I, actually, there's been a lot of things that I've seen throughout um, that I feel like he does pull a lot of stuff from both his fan comics and other people's. Like, I used to read Dragon Ball Multiverse, and I still jump in and catch up on it every now and then. There's a there's a fan comic from before Super and all that new stuff, but uh, I definitely see him pulling ideas here and there. I'm like, hey, that's just that thing, you know? Like the whole concept of um, Goku Black and Zamasu. Like, yeah, I'm pretty sure like he just kind of pulled that idea from AF because AF had the evil Supreme Kai, and um, it wasn't actually goku but it was like a clone slash child of goku used with made with his dna so it was like kind of like the same idea yeah again just more fan fiction -y. yeah and then there was a whole bit where they were gonna seal the goku clone slash son into the z sword which is you know kind of mirrors the whole evil containment wave on goku black or zamasu yeah. so it's just like you, you see a lot of these connections like he's just kind of pulling Pulling stuff from that to try and, I guess, keep his old work alive, which is kind of cool. Yeah. I mean, Toriyama did that, too, so. Hmm. Yeah, the, God, I haven't thought about the Z-Sword in forever. Mm -hmm. That's kind of been just forgotten about at this point. Yeah, well, I mean, it was broken, and that's how we got old Kai. And then you actually, um, I think you only find out. I think you only learned this in the manga, but in the super manga, uh, you learned that Trunks trained with the Z sword as well, but it was destroyed entirely before it had a chance to break. So he never got the, he never got the elder Kai. Hmm. Like he just died without being released because his whole sword is vaporized. Well, that's depressing. <laughs> yeah. He's like waiting for how, like how many thousands of years. And then he's just dead. <laughs> just blipped out of existence. Yeah. Actually, no, I think it's millions of years. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> and then we get in the, the modern continuity where, Z where Zeno just blips people out of existence all the time. Yep, just on a whim. It's Including like, oh, that man, 
I spilled my ice world. cream. It's like, oh man, I spilled my ice cream. <laughs> yeah. Death the Universe 12. <laughs> yep, pretty much. Zeno is an interesting idea. And there's just two, the fact that there's just two of them now. Yeah, right? That's wild. Like, it, Goku gets away with a lot of shit just because he's Goku. Yeah. Because anyone else works for him. Anyone else would have probably been like, "What? Like, can't do that." Well, I think that I think that's part of the reason why Zeno gets him get away with it because everyone's always walking on eggshells around him. And I think the the candidness, you know, the straightforwardness of Goku was refreshing. He doesn't have a filter. He legit just says what he feels like and doesn't think about it. Yeah, which is great. But, oh, you know what's uh, funny? I saw the, you know, the Fathom events, like movie theater things they do all the time. Uh, no. They're like little, like special screenings of different things. Like not like even new, always new movies. Sometimes it's like an older film they'll re-release in theaters. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, they're doing one for final fantasy seven advent children. Uh, oh yeah. That's right. It's on a Wednesday though. So I was, I was tempted to go, but like, I was like, yeah, this is on a Wednesday. Yeah, I think we talked about that like a, a couple months ago or something. Hmm. And uh, it, it actually is going to be like the complete version, like the the like fixed version, I guess. Yeah, the, the slightly less shit version. Yeah, I wouldn't mind watching that again. I was tempted to go see it in theaters. I just like it's on a Wednesday and I'd have to go like all out of my way to go watch it. So I was like, nah. Yeah, well, um, I... See, I'd want to go see it. I feel like if I'm going to watch it again, I should just get the DVD. Because um, uh, obviously I wouldn't be going alone. I'd be taking either Cindy or Xander or whatever. But Xander just started playing the remake. Hmm. So, you know, I'm trying to keep him spoiler free. Yeah, um, even though they're technically separate universes, but there's enough there that I guess could be spoilerish, I guess. Yeah, well, I mean, at this point, he knows nothing about anything with the story. He just knows, oh, Cloud, he's got a big sword, and Sephiroth's the bad guy. That's pretty much all he knows. Yeah. Um, and I, I want to get Cindy to play it at some point, because I think... Because she, she doesn't really do turn-based games. So I wanted yeah. to... I figured the remake might be a good uh, substitution, just so she can experience the story. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I mean... I love the original seven, but it is a dated game at this point. Yeah. Uh, which actually I wanted to ask you, um, the, when you're selecting difficulty on the remake, it has like easy, easy, normal, and then easy classic and normal classic. Is that like, is like a turn-based option? No, it's always. Have you tried it? I don't think I did. I, I know that they're both action-based. Um, I think the classic might incorporate some elements that are more stylized after the original. Mm -hmm. I haven't played it in like a year, so I honestly don't remember. Yeah. Well, the, the like little um, wall market Coliseum thing has like has the option of selecting one of those without changing it for the whole game. So I might just try it and see what happens. Because if there is like a version, like a way to just switch the game to JRPG mode, like turn based, like that'd be kind of a fun way to play that game. I'm pretty sure it's still action based, both versions, but I don't know. I mean, I feel like it would be kind of a silly choice not to do that. Yeah, I think the problem is that the, the game was. The option. They, to do it, they'd have to probably redesign the entire game, unfortunately. Yeah, that's true. Oh, um, do you happen to know what's up with those, like, Wu-Tai doors? Do I need to play as Yuffie to open those? I don't remember, to be honest. I'll just Google it. I just figured yeah. I'd have to hear it ask. But, um, yeah, I haven't, I, I just haven't played that thing in so long. I, my memory's gone from it. I get that. Yeah. Um... Trying to think. I think we've really kind of covered it all uh, for the most part. This was kind of just a catching up episode just because timing's weird right now. Yeah. Um, um, I do, uh, before we close it out, I, I want to tell a little story from 
from the time that we were there. Yeah, go for it. Um, so it was the last day that we were in the park and uh, we had seen like this pearl stand and um, you know, Cindy loves pearls and stuff and her, uh, her ring uh, got broken a while ago. So she's been kind of using substitute rings for a while. So I was like, oh, it's a good opportunity, you know, cause they had like a bunch of bands and stuff. You could get a pearl to put on it and stuff. So I was like, oh, I'm going to go send her off over to the, um, the donut shop with Xander over there. And I'm going to, I'm going to grab her a ring while she's, while she's busy. Uh, it wasn't that easy. <laughs> cause I, I go up to, to the stand, the guy comes around and he's like, um, I think he's, I think he was like Greek or something. Like he didn't have like a super thick accent, but he had an accent and he, you know, he asked me what I want. I say, Oh, you know, uh, you know, I was pointing at bands and asking about prices and I, I picked one and he was like, okay. And then he, he turns and he gives me a pair of wooden tongs and he points down to this bowl of oysters and he goes, pick the ugliest oyster. I said, okay, that's, that's kind of cool. You just pick one right out of the oyster. That's fun. So I grab one and he opens it up. No, I, every time I tell the story, I skip the most important part. Um, so he puts the oyster down before he opens it. And then he takes the tongs away and he takes out these three like wooden spoon things. And they're all like decorated. They have like glitter and sequins and all this crazy shit on it. And he goes, you know what these are? I said, I don't know. Spoons, spatulas. I don't know. And he goes, no, no, no. These are magic wands. Okay. <laughs> so, so what you're going to do is you're going to pick the one you think is pretty. So I said, okay, whatever. And I just grabbed one and he goes, now hold it like a wand. I hold it up. He goes, no, that's a hammer. Hold it like a wand. <laughs> so, like, so he, he, he tells me to do like this little chant or whatever and wave it over the oyster. But like, he doesn't want me to say the chant. He wants me to scream. it. <laughs> and this is like literally the busiest night. The whole time that we were there is literally like thousands of people in in the park right now i got people surrounding me and so you know I, i'm not like a super outward guy like I, I i i generally keep to myself so bringing a lot of attention to myself was you know a lot but yeah. i was like you know it's part of the experience he, he does this to everybody whatever so i i do it and he goes not loud enough oh no <laughs> so i do it again he's like come on dude you got to do it again. <laughs> like, I literally had to do this shit three fucking times. And by the time it was done, there was a whole crowd around me watching. Yeah. Because as soon as we did it the third time, he takes out this, this giant bell and he starts ringing it over his head going, it's a celebration. It's a celebration. Yep. I'm fucking like my, my face is beat red at this point because I'm so fucking embarrassed. Like I, yeah. I'm not the kind of person who gets up in front of people and does this kind of shit. But he goes through the whole thing. He opens it up, and uh, it ended up being a black pearl, which is really cool. I guess it's uh, like under two percent of pearls mm -hmm. are black pearls. So, and she loves black pearls, so it was a really cool thing. And um, by the end of it, he he like gets in real close, and he goes, "I want you to make sure that you tell your wife exactly what this costed you." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I just like, oh my god. I, I, and then when I go and meet up with her and she's like, where, where were you? Like what, what took so long or whatever? Cause I, I thought I was only going to be waiting for like a couple minutes. You know, I thought it was going to be as simple as pick one, you know, slap it together, swipe your card. That's it. No, nah, it wasn't that simple. No. I was over there for like a half an hour <laughs> doing this whole thing. And like, I get over there and I, you know, I tell her like, I, you know, I got you something. And there's a story behind it, but I'm not going to tell you here because I'm not doing it in this crowd. I don't want to go through that again. Yep. But yeah, that was that was pretty wild, and and uh, they both got a kick out of it once I told them. <laughs> I'm sure they did. That sounds. It sounds like that was probably his intention the entire time. Yeah. Well, it, I don't know. I think I think he goes out of his way to try and embarrass people. That's probably that's probably his like the, the, the like the little amount of joy he gets while he's there. So yeah, right. But yeah, it <laughs> was, it was just, it was, oh man, 
I, I, I was not expecting to be that embarrassed when I walked up to that stand. I was this close to walking away. <laughs> yeah. The question is, did anyone else go to the stand after you? Uh, probably not. I mean, a lot of the people who were gathering around were probably locals who knew that this guy did this all the time. <laughs> They were yeah. like, oh, I got another one. Let's go see. <laughs> probably. But, That's good. Yeah, it was just, it, it was a funny, funny thing. Nice. Oh, boy. God, I can't wait till, uh, till spring. Get this winter stuff over with. I know. I'm, I'm tired of it. It's, it's like, I don't know. It hasn't even been that bad. I mean, maybe it's been a little worse for you. I feel like you've gotten more snow than we have. Um, it's not even that it's been bad. It's just, it's been cold this year. Yeah. I mean, hopefully it'll at least be cold enough to kill the ticks. Because the ticks have been wicked bad the past few years because we haven't had, like, cold winters. Yeah. We had a rainy, uh, we had a rainy summer this year, so. Yeah, for sure. It's kind of a, it's been odd, an odd couple of years, a year for weather. Hmm. We're talking about the weather. I think we've officially reached the point of, uh, yeah. <laughs> we're out of topics. I think so. No, it was good though. Catching up, just, uh, getting caught up on a few things. Hopefully next week we'll get back to, uh, somewhat regular topic it's still probably gonna be a shorter episode just because of uh, the work stuff but yeah um we still haven't even determined what it's gonna be yet but yeah we'll figure, we'll something, figure something out. out but yeah so once again guys thanks for joining us on geek addicts so you can find geek addicts in the gnc podcast feed on all the major podcasting platforms um we're also available on youtube now so you can find the audio and occasional video uh, versions of different podcasts on there and you can also follow all of our links at linktree slash the barber games and if you'd like you can join the gnc podcast discord server to find all things gaming and collecting geek addicts uh the 3do experience talk gaming anime uh anything really any topics there's a kermit the frog and the water bottle fascination now that's that's our new story arc at the moment <laughs> but uh yeah we're a bunch of fun people there so with that everybody we'll see you all later have a good one <laughs>